my name is Sila Beck and the Rabbi from Another Planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. I have been watching Doctor Who. I've been watching Doctor Who for you, so you don't have to watch it. And I've taken copious notes so I can tell you exactly what happened in last night's episode practice. Uh, <laughs> probably one of the better episodes of the Chibnall era, but still just excruciating woke bingo, which I think is just so demeaning to uh, the people who they think they're championing. It's just, oh, God, it's so awful. Oh, so much of it, so awful. But before we get into it, let's talk about Good Doctor Who. I am giving away Good Doctor Who uh, while the new series of Doctor Who is running. The next batch I'm giving away is the eSpace Trilogy. You can win this uh, pretty easily. Um, actually, what was the hashtag we said? Uh, okay, so this is three stories in it. The This is uh, Full Circle, State of Decay, and uh, Warrior's Gate. It was on DVD. Uh, tons and tons of fantastic extras, and you can win it by leaving by subscribing to the channel and leaving the hashtag Marshmen. Hashtag Marshmen. I'm going to put the um, the instructions in the video notes, and you can do it all the all this week. And we'll do the prize drawing uh, on Sundays on the Tarda Zone with with the uh, no, I'm normally on the live stream live stream there, and uh, that's where we announce the winner. So tune into that, and you you can you can win a prize. That was really it's really nice last night. Because uh, the guy who won was on was on the chat and he was he was really chuffed. I'm really happy for him. Fine. So let's talk about Doctor Who. This episode is called Praxis, and I'm gonna get yeah, I'm gonna give it to you as much detail as possible. And I look, I literally just spent an hour writing down exactly. What happened. If you see my eyes like over like this, it's because I'm re reading my notes, and there are copious notes because there's lots to talk about. Fine. So Doctor Who starts uh, with the without a cold opening. We just go straight into that awful freaking theme tune. Which, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if... Is that the Murray Gold theme tune played underwater? And you, you know, it was like this glorious, like... Bah, 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 and that's, oh, then they, but they play it underwater, so it's like... Bah, 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 bah. Fine. So, okay, I'm, so I'm like, ugh, is this Doctor Who again? Ah. Uh, then I see uh, the writers, Chris Mateague and... Um, uh, Pete Mateague and Chris Chibnall. Oh, okay. Pete Mateague. I've seen him on the uh, the classic Doctor Who DVD uh, Blu-ray extras. He seems like a real genuine fan. His his episode last year, uh, Kablam, was the uh, least offensive of this, and I think th this episode is probably one of the least. I don't know. It's so bad though. Oh, there's so much they drop in it. Anyway, fine. So, but I see I pick uh, uh, Pete Matik's name and go, okay, open mind. I'm going to. This might be good. This might be great. And then. It starts off, uh, we have a, uh, a vista of Earth, a uh, good special effects shot of, of, of Earth from space. And then we hear the Doctor sound, uh, give, doing a voiceover, and she's so bad at it. Like, what? Oh, okay. BBC, you've got to know how to play to your strengths. Because Whitaker monologuing is not one of your strengths. You do not want to have that uh, coming off of that. She can't deliver a good line. I'm sorry. That's just reality. She is not one sort of thing. In fact, you know, I'm I'm waiting right now for season 20, uh, 26 to arrive on the the Blu-ray. That was the last the uh, Sylvester McCoy. Uh, it was the last one of the the classic era, and just by that season, they uh, you know Andrew Cartmel was the scriptwriter at the time. He I read an interview with him, Cyril, and said, he said he just kind of worked out how how to work to the BBC's strength by that. You know, like. If they did spaceship and science fiction things, BBC did that very badly. You know, they, 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 the design department would not put that together well. But if they did stuff like in set in like Victorian times, Edwardian times, the sixties, anything like that, anything like period, BBC, they knew the BBC could do it well. Which is, I think, why they were they they leaned into like contemporary and recent history rather than going in uh, going more straight for science fiction. Which again, that's leaning into your strength. So the strength you want to lean in. Something you, you don't want to lean into is Whitaker. She is your weakest link. She is excruciating. She has got worse as the weeks go on. She is like nails on short balls. She is just freaking awful in this role. Ah, uh, fine. So, uh, visceral space. We see a a crashing space module fly overhead again. Respect work. Okay, not, not, uh, nothing to. Uh, Bad to say about it. So there's a space, there's a space module crashing, and it's going tumbling down to Earth, and so that'll be cut to a uh, a, a, a English uh, supermarket, and we have Jake, uh, played by by Warren Brown, who is far too good for this trick. He was far too good for this role. Uh, I at first I thought, oh my god, is he playing the same character as he is in the Big Finish audios from Unit? And thankfully he isn't. 
Um, <laughs> as I was watching, I looked up Big Finish to see the, the his character and to make make make, uh, make sure he's different. He's not the same character, but well, that character is pretty good. But okay, so it starts. So, so we, we, when you cut to him, he's he's tackling this kid who's shoplifting. It's obviously a white kid, you know. So that's that's one of the the things I just hate about this Doctor Who that it makes you. It's so incredibly. Identity, identity politics ridden and run. It's every, it goes for everybody. It makes you look at people like that by going, oh, obviously, negative character has to be white male. You know, it just, you know, it just that's the way it is. So, um, it's just, God, it's so disgusting. Like, Doctor Who, Doctor Who has become an object of race, a vehicle for just vile racism. Fine. So, there, uh, so yeah, he's, he rubbed with this kid who's shoplifting. I couldn't work out if he's working there as a store detective or something, but the person who's who, the shop, uh, the person on the checkout lets the kid go and says, no, you can't really, really, really do this stuff, and you know, it's not working out. So I get the feeling he was fired, but it seems like he was fired not by the manager, but by you know the, 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 the cashier. So I don't even know if he was working there. Maybe he's just some like crazy person on day release. <laughs> yeah, so one, okay, so he's also a policeman. But we, he's on taking a break right now to get his head straight. Okay. Cut to Peru. Now we're in uh, a, a, a second location. And we have backpackers, backpackers uh, Jamilia and Gabriella, who are, uh, they're going to go, oh, look, I'm going to take you to the most beautiful river of the world. It's going to be the best. It's, it's so good. They're in the middle of this jungle in Peru, and they go out from the clearing, and the river is covered with garbage and pollution. Oh, my God. What could have happened? Could it have been the patriarchy at work again? I think it might be. I think it might be the patriarchy. Get ready, Doctor Who. You might have to stand up against the patriarchy. Uh, so they go, we can't stay here. It's, it's a garbage tip. What's going on? And so they do the sensible thing and they, they stay there. <laughs> they, they're like, well, I guess I guess we'll just make a, a, put a tent up and stay in this freaking garbage tip for no apparent reason. That's what they're going to do. Uh, so they stay there, and that night, uh, one of the backpackers, Jamila, goes out, and she looks around, and she's like, oh, 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 something, and, yeah, you have some, like, weird, uh, evil eye point of view, chasing, like, stalking her, there's birds flying overhead, and suddenly, blah, they all attack her, and, oh, cut away, we have no idea what, uh, what happens, cut to, I have to say, this episode did rattle along quite nicely, and any time it didn't have Whitaker in it, it wasn't excruciating. You know, it's like, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm getting to that time of life where, where I'm going to have to go for a prostate exam, you know, that's the, and I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm telling my wife, no, that's not happening. I'm not having it. Look, honestly, I, that my, my, my rectum is a one way orifice. It's an outy, not an inny. I'm just, this just my personal, personal, uh, uh, take on it. So I'm like, no, I'm just not going to do that. And, and I, I imagine when I do do that, when I do eventually do that, that's going to have to drug me and hold me down. Um, but when they stop, when they take the finger out or the probe out, it's going to feel so freaking good. So it's going to be feel good that it's not happening. So that's how I feel about when Jodie Whittaker is on screen. It's as good as when you stop being anally violated by some kind of probe. That's how, that's how I would uh, describe Whittaker's performance. Fine. So then uh, we cut to a pub and Jake is drinking away, drowning his sorrows. Don't know how because he doesn't have a job uh, and he used to be a policeman somehow or something. And he's watching the news story of the astronaut crashing, Adam, and he looks up and there's some, obviously some connection with him. Of course, they're not brothers. You know, that, that that's not going to happen. That, that, but there's some connection. Okay, and then he gets a text. Somehow he gets a text uh, saying, help me. And he goes, who is this? It says it's Adam, Adam being the name of the, the, the spaceship he got at the beginning. And he sends him a location and he's in Hong Kong. So this is a really important plot thread. Like how How is Adam sending him messages, texting him? What's going on? And, you know, all this stuff is really clearly very important and it's never going to be answered again. <laughs> they say, forget it, that's gone. That plot thread makes no sense and they don't address it again. Back to the Trash Heap River and it's the morning and Gabriella's woken up the other backpack and she's looking around for a friend. And it's, uh, we can't work out what's going on. We just go through the tra trash pile. And she finds a dead bird there. She's about to touch the dead bird. Then Brian pops up and says, uh, out no, I can't do his voice. But that, 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 what's he like in real life, Ryan? I, I can't wait to see him in the show he's been cast in in America to see if he's exactly the same. He strikes me as somebody who really can't act that much. So I, I don't know. I, I am intrigued to see him in something different. 
yeah, it seems like Hollyoaks is the right thing for him. <laughs> so that's probably where he's from. Okay, so uh, what happens next? It, it's, uh, uh, it goes through the... Uh, oh, yeah, she, he finds the bird right, right, right and shows up. Don't touch the bird. Bird is bad. Bird's infected with something. You don't want to go, go near there. Okay, then cut to Hong Kong. Thankfully, Jodie Whittaker hasn't showed up yet, and everything's pretty good still because she's still not there. Um, in, in Hong Kong, Jake is looking for the location of, uh, that he was sent on the, in the phone. Uh, uh, which is somehow by Adam, and he meets, uh, he, he finds the door, he tries to kick it in, but he can't, and that's where he meets Yaz and Graham, uh, who said, oh, so wrong, son, says Graham, and Yaz is like, well, we got the skeleton keys, and lets him in for some reason. Then go to another location, now we go to Madagascar, and we have two people uh, um, uh, on a beachside research place, Suki and this other guy, I don't didn't get the other guy's name, um and uh you know then then you know then they say oh I'm, I'm the, the 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 other guy is uh is there before Suki and they have a bit of chit chat and then like like a a uh, records being scratched by a rhino in a china store uh the doctor enters and she's like oh god she's so freaking awesome she she's running through the on the beach she's r running through the water using shaky cam to hide that she runs like a duck and she just doesn't know how to freaking run she's screeching need some help over here because she needs help for everything because she's re she's just retarded she can't do anything she is the retarded regeneration who, who who needs an adult supervisor? That that's who she is. I, I'm sorry. Look, if say if I'm retarded is a bad word, I apologize. I'm just not up on the PC speak. Yeah, you know, I'm not Chibnall. I can't. I don't know how it goes through his bloody mind. Fine. So uh, back in Peru, uh, Gabriella is in, in, initially distrustful of Ryan, but she's run won over by his honesty and his firm body. <laughs> she said, mm, "Do you work out?" And Ryan said, "Oh, I run a bit." Uh, and then she said, "Well, obviously you know who I am because I'm 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 part of a uh, the famous uh, vlogger. Uh, me and G Gabriella and G Jamila is a uh, we're, we're famous vloggers. So obviously you know who they are." And Ryan's like, "No, I don't know who you are. I've never heard of you." And I've been trolling myself. And then he wraps up the dead bird and collects it because you know that that makes a lot of sense. Uh, in Hong Kong, inside the uh, inside this uh, ratty w uh, location warehouse. We um we have Jake, Yaz, and Graham. They're they're investigating, <coughs> and uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like a sort of super high tech place. Why why is this place in uh, uh, in, uh, in Hong Kong? Oh, that's an important plot thread. You know, that's an important plot point, and we're going to come back. But never, it's one of the many things they're not going. The plot points are going to drop, and it's not going to make any sense at all. Uh, Madagascar. So they were so the dogs was running in uh, on the beach because there was a, uh, somebody. In the water, uh, who apparently was from a, a U.S. Uh, submarine that has gone missing. They drag him out of the water. He's got this like weird crustacean on him, uh, and she and she's like they, they're swapping introductions with uh, Suki and the other guy, whoever he is. And uh, the, suddenly the crustacean, the guy wakes up. He starts talking, but there's like weird crustacean thing <laughs> covers his whole body, and then <laughs> blows up, uh, and he's dead. You know, it kind of reminds me. Of that South Park, <laughs> when when they did about financial management, and you know you you, you take the money, the kids' money to the super saver account. Then okay, we're going to invest it, and we're doing this and that, and we're going and, oh, and it's gone, and it's dead. That's what that's what this doctor's like with with people. She means and oh, I'm going to do this and, oh, and he's dead because I I came nearer. She is this this doctor is like the angel of death. Um. Okay. So and and obviously. After he explodes, the doctor doesn't know what's going on because there's this doctor who is freaking clueless in every way, shape, and form. Fine. Next up, we have back in uh, where where is it? In Peru. Oh, for some reason they made a big deal about the. I think the woman playing Gabriella or Jamila um, is was the first. Peruvian, I think. <laughs> so, just some first or some form of nationality to fly in the TARDIS or to be in Doctor Who. Who, who, who gives a crap? Apparently, these people do. I don't know why. Fine. So we then we have so back, we're back in Peru. And we have Ryan and Gabriella. They go to the hospital to look for their missing, uh, comp her missing companion Jamila, and the hospital is creepily deserted for some reason, and uh, no one's there. And, and again, this is a very 
important plot thread, which they're going to explain. Never! They're never going to explain this because they're dummies and they just put things in for dramatic effect without any thought about how or why it's going to work. So we don't, we never find out why the hospital is derelict and deserted, but they do find a uh, one body there un uh, under a sheet. They pull the sheet back, and of course it's Jamila, uh, and she's also got the same crustacean on her face. Uh, and then uh, Ryan, who says, don't touch the bird, because that bird is, is full of some kind of disease or uh, infection. He, what's his first thing? Without a glove, he touches the bloody face, and the, the, the infect's like, ah! what is wrong? what's wrong with you? Oh my god, I can see why you travel with the doctor, I can see why you travel with the most stupid doctor that's ever inhabited the TARDIS, because you're also a moron, I don't know how you survived. Um, he touches it and she wakes up, <gasps> uh, and uh, the, the the doctor rushes in, and uh, the crustacean covers her whole body, and poof, she dies. So another one's gone. <laughs> okay, because this doctor is the kiss of death. Back in Hong Kong, uh, the uh, they find uh, Adam, the astronaut from the beginning, who's wired into all this alien tech. Uh, Yaz finds. Uh, um, um, Finds a bit, finds this bit of alien technology that she just knows is important because Yaz, Yaz is essentially a, a cross between K9 and a sonic screwdriver. Whenever there is something a plot needs to have something be able done, Yaz knows how to do it. So Yaz recognizes this is an important thing, right? And uh, they start, uh, they, and they, they uh, Adam the astronaut wakes up and he's uh, wired in to everything, and he's, and they say, oh no, you've got to get out of it. They're going to come. Who's going to come? Oh, they, 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 they first they want to. They talk if they're going to take him out the alien, alien technology, unwire him from it. And they say, no, no, it's too dangerous. Then these two people in like these like rubber hazmat suits and gas masks show, show up and start firing uh, laser w w beams at them badly and missing. And they say, they say, quick, get out of, get him out, out, out of the alien stuff. He's like, well, isn't that bad? No, it's not bad at all because now we're being chased by, by, by people for some reason. Um, fine. So they, they, they get him out and they, they, they run away. Uh, and Jake manages to be, uh, to fight off the hazmat people, grab one of their guns and shoot them. And that's just when the doctor shows up. And of course, the doctor's like, oh, I can't see who they are through them. They're, they're, uh, they're, I'm not making this up, but this is actually really what happened. She can't see who they are through the, the gas marks, the hazmat suit. So she says, oh, let me try and take it off. Excuse me, they're wearing freaking breathing apparatus. If you take it off, you might kill them. What's wrong with you? <sighs> Okay. Uh, so they run to the TARDIS, but uh, Yaz yeah, says so, so she's got to stay behind to get that uh, piece of alien technology, which is important for some reason, for reasons I don't know why. Uh, and she doesn't know why. She just knows that it's got to be important. She says it's important. So Gabriella stays with her, and, and the doctor says, fine, I'll be back for you in an hour. What? Isn't that a little bit, you know, stupidly dangerous? Uh, okay, fine, who cares? Because inside the TARDIS, she's checking Adam uh, uh, for whatever's wrong with him, and she uh, takes readings from him, and then she gets a call from Madagascar, from Suki, says, do you need to phone or something else weird happens? Fine, so then they go back to, to Madagascar, and they've got to use the lab. I don't, do they say what's weird is happening? I think the birds are flying overhead or something. Uh, while they're there, we find out that the Jake and Adam are separated slash Married, depending on uh, you know uh, which one's point of view, and of course they are because again, this is diversity bingo. We have to have you. Know, we have to check all the boxes. We can't treat people like people. We can't treat people with dignity. We can't treat people with human beings. We have to treat them as a collection of of surface traits that are just stupid. Fine. So the birds are going crazy um, over the head in in, uh, in Madagascar. Uh, Yaz and uh, and Hong Kong Yaz and Gabriella investigate the the warehouse that they're in, and uh, one of the the people in the hazmat suits who were injured, they weren't killed. He uh, he you know, slinks away, goes that piece of tech, and it turns out to be a, a, a teleport. Boom! Teleports away. Well, uh, Yaz and Gabriella's watching him. Back in uh, Madagascar, the doctor puts everything works. Ryan has to dissect the bird. Really. I, has any? I, I couldn't do that. Like, how does anybody know how to dissect a freaking bird? Yeah, why doesn't the doctor do it? She's a freaking doctor! 
okay, but no, no, apparently that doesn't, that makes sense. That, and then Jake is told to put an IV into Adam. And again, he doesn't know how to do that. But unfortunately, Graham had cancer. And he saw how it was done lots of times. Over, so now he knows how to put an IV in. Oh, no, he's, they're going to kill him. Oh, my God. Just stop. Everybody stop. You, 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 none of you should be allowed out the house. These are all, all dangerous, dangerous, insane people. Okay, so finally the doctor asks uh, Suki what it allows for. And she says it's for uh, marine filtration. The doctor says, ah, that's why you've got a water, fil a water filtration system. So Suki is really impressed with the doctor. She noticed that. said, oh, you, you, you pick up everything. You're so clever. So she's really impressed with the doctor, but not quite as impressed as the doctor is with, with herself. Says, well, that's just one of my talents, knowing everything. <laughs> okay. Oh, she doesn't know anything, and she's patronizing and awful all at the same time. Uh, fine. Adam is, uh, they, they scan, they, they look at Adam's, uh, the scan of Adam's blood, and he's uh, infected with an, uh, uh, the alien pathogen, uh, presumably from Hong Kong. Wait a minute, he just fell out of space! Why could he not have got the alien pathogen in space? No, apparently he fell in Hong Kong. How, oh, but it's a very important plot point, how he got from his crashed alien pod, when nobody notices him, to that warehouse in Kong, Hong Kong, uh, the, yeah, another very important plot point, which of course we're never going to talk about because they never discuss it because it makes no freaking sense and nothing matters. Uh, something that does matter is making sure that men not seem stupid. So Ryan says he doesn't know what a pathogen is, and Graham says, oh, I didn't know either, but he didn't want to sound stupid. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what a pathogen is because everybody knows what a freaking pathogen is, morons. Fine, so in Hong Kong, we have uh, Yaz and Gat Gabriella. They're gonna they're gonna go through the teleport blindly, and I so wanted them just to appear in space and die instant. Yeah, you know, I wanted to be like Rick and Morty, you know, like uh, space will kill you. Everything out here will kill. No, uh, so they just boom. They're gonna teleport out uh, on the beach. Gray Jake and Graham have a bit of a heart to heart about their messed up relationship. Not Greg and Jake and Graham. Jake and Adam. Uh, essentially, Jake thinks Adam is so much better than him because he's an astronaut, and so he's always like being bad whatever, for some reason. Okay, um, fine. So Yaz and Gabriella don't, didn't die, which is a bit, bit of a bummer. And then this weird alien colony place somewhere, um, and they find in there the missing submarine from Ma uh, Madagascar. The yeah, top topography of the place looks like that alien crustacean. Uh, Yaz assumes they're on an alien planet. Fine. Uh, Doctor and Suki come up with a plan for a vaccine uh, to make a virus to, to combat it. Uh, inside the bird uh, is uh, that uh, Ryan has uh, done an autopsy on, somehow has dissected. It's full of plastic uh, and uh, the, because the birds eat plastic, not being able to differentiate from food, but plastic pollution. And so the doctor says, oh, this, this alien virus is attacking plastic. Could it be the Altons? I'm like, well, that would be okay. That would make sense. That would be clever. That's actually not a bad idea. Could it be the Altons? And she goes, no, no, it's not the Altons. No, that, that might be enjoyable. So, no, it can't be the Altons. Um, and somehow having the water filtration system is the key because it filters out microplastics. Um, and, but they don't really explain it well. I, but the microplastics in people's body, basically there's so much pollution in the world, we all have lots of plastic in our body. Uh, and that's what the alien infection is going to uh, grab onto and take over the world. So that 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 was the today's Doctor Who's today the lecture of the day. How we like polluting our planet and we're poisoning ourselves as well. Thank thank you thank you Doctor uh, Doctor for for helping us out with a, a bit of um, talking down to us. That's always good, isn't it? Okay, so then we needed something to happen. So the bird goes birds go nuts and they swoop in and they go into the lab. They attack everybody. Um, the then. The doctor and Suki realize that the birds have a natural enzyme that is attacking the virus, so they want to make an antivirus out of that supercharged enzyme, which is what they said like three minutes earlier. Now they just know how to do it. Uh, back in the um, uh, where wherever Yaz is, the, the 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 crustacean place, she talks on their magic like on their magic earphones that they that they've got somehow. Uh, the the doctor says, "Oh, we found that we found the a cure." And Yaz tells them they're on an alien planet, and they do an in info dump saying that the uh, they they found out that the the data um, 
from Hong Kong is being sent to the bottom of the Indian Ocean and to Madagascar, where they are. So that, that's how the Doctor realizes that Suki is bad. She's a bad person and she spills the plot. <laughs> I would have got away with it if he wasn't for you meddling kids. And she tells the entire plot. The infection is part is a smart alien infection called Praxius, which is why we got the episode title. She's looking for a cure. Uh, and then she teleports out, un outwitting the Doctor, which is not really that hard. Um, birds attack again. Uh, oh, wait, but at some point, the last time the birds attacked outside the uh, the lab, they, they I think they killed that guy who, um, they killed the guy. Okay, fine. Uh, who I don't know the name and we're not going to see again, so it do doesn't really matter. Fine. So, um, the birds attack in. Now, yeah, now, this time they come inside the, the, the lab. They run for the lab. Lots of shaky camera, like, to avoid uh, showing that the doctor runs like a freaking duck. Uh, and they make it into the TARDIS. Fine. Um, so they've worked out the birds of the system, uh, the delivery system for the alien virus, and they decide to test the cure on Adam. But the doctor says, no, it's too dangerous. He's dying! He's got the crusty stuff all over his face. He's about to die. It, I would say not trusting the, uh, the cure would also be a little bit dangerous. Doctor, doctor idiot. Uh, imposter who, as you are. Uh, so then the, he takes the, 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 he takes the, the cure and they, they leave him alone to see if it works. Yaz and Gabriella, uh, discover that, um, uh, oh, discover the hazmat people, uh, who, who had, who had died. Uh, they take, they take the mask off, so at least they didn't kill him. And this is a fully incrustated version of, uh, of the people, like the people who have been incrustated before, but this one didn't blow up. They were able to run around and be kind of monsters. Okay, so they're. They're testing the cure on Adam as the TARDIS lands, and they so you have Doctor Ryan Graham. They oh my god, I'm so good to you giving you what you have to sit through this nonsense. Doctor Ryan and Graham hooks up with Yaz and Gabriella. Uh, they're not on an alien planet, but they're at the bottom of the in, in the in the ocean. Um, fine, the dead encrusted people uh, didn't explode because they were aliens, uh, unlike humans. Humans just uh, humans explode with this uh, with this uh, infection. But not the aliens. They were Suki's crew. They meet Suki there again. Uh, where they are is a wrecked spaceship at the bottom of the Indian Ocean. Um, and they get, we get ma major info dumps now. Praxis devastated Suki's planet, uh, killed everyone, and they sent the survivors out in uh, in lab ships and research ships to find a cure. They uh, they this ship went to Earth because it's so polluted with plastics. It's a perfect it's a perfect petri dish to find find a solution. Um, so, uh, and so it will, will involve killing the entire population planet. But what the hey, you know, science is science, baby. You have to, you have to give room for science to grow. So, uh, doctor says the cure she's developed won't work on Suki because she's not human. Uh, Suki runs to the flight deck and then, uh, the doctor tries to talk sense to her saying, listen, we're two brilliant, stunning and brave women of science. We can fix this. And of course she's wrong because then Suki goes, gets covered in the crustacean and explodes. And she's dead because uh, she had she had contact with, uh, with the first female doctor play with Jodie Whittaker. <coughs> um, fine. So then the uh, Adam turns up. The antidote has worked. Well, what a shock! Uh, the doctor needs a crew to fly the fly Suki's spaceship so they can use it as a delivery mechanism for the cure. So they have Graham, Yaz, uh, Ryan, Adam, Jake, and Gabriella. All for start, start using the spaceship perfectly. They they all worked it out, no problem. But this last minute problem, the autopilot breaks. It starts to blow up. Doctor gets everybody to run into the darkness again. She runs like a duck, but they leave one person behind. They leave Jake behind. <coughs> and he's um, he's going to sacrifice himself and be a manual pilot instead of the autopilot. And he, he, he's able to pilot the ship perfectly um, and uh, disperse the virus and save the day. But the ship's about to break up, but of course the Doctor's able to materialize the TARDIS around him and save him. Um, and uh, and we, we get that, so because of that we get the first same-sex kiss in the TARDIS. Yes, yes, we are breaking so many boundaries, or so many important boundaries every day here in Doctor Who. Uh, now, And so the, the, the episode ends with... Uh, with Adam, uh, who's, who is a missing freaking astronaut. Well, surely nobody's going to want to know how he got there. And Jake uh, and uh, Gabriella joining up. Jake now doesn't feel inferior to Adam because he heroically tried to sacrifice himself to save him, uh, to, to, to uh, give the cure to the planet. And, they, and so the three of them go off and make a new uh, vlog 
obviously not that worried about that Jamila is now dead in a in an empty hospital in Peru for some reason. And, and, and that was the episode of, of Doctor Who called Praxius. I hope you enjoyed it. Now let's have a look at the ratings. How many people watched this direct? See if they came out yet. Doing a refresh. Uh, no, 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 it's not refreshing. Yeah. Uh, no, we still don't have the overnight yet. I guess there'll be another video for tomorrow. Let me just check DoctorWhoNews.com. Sometimes they bring it out first. And we are... Oh, overnight figures. Let me think. Oh, ho, 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 ho! we broke 4,000. Uh, 4 million. I'm so excited. That overnight was 3.97. 3.97. Ah! That's got to be... Okay, that is 100,000 below... Uh, the uh, the lowest rated episode so far, episode four, the uh, Nikolai Tesla's Night Night of Terror, um, which had a final uh, uh, full screen rating of five point two. So if that if that stays the same, we're gonna get the lowest rated episode of Doctor Who ever in the in the new, in this run, which will be make it under five point one two. I can't wait to find out. I can't wait to find out. It's what it freaking deserved. <laughs> Fine, I have to go. I, I put this is what thirty minute video. It's too way too much time to spend in this. At least you don't have to watch Doctor Who. Look on the bright side. My name is Phil Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Let me know what you think. Let me know your comments. Uh, and if you look, if you like Doctor, if you'd like this, tell me why. I just want to know why. It's so it's such a mystery to me. Let me know why. And listen, I, if you want to come on and have a uh, have a discussion about it on a video or on a live stream, I am more than happy to do that. Uh, leave your comments. I will endeavor to reply to all of you. And have yourself a fantastic day. You're probably going to have a fantastic day if you didn't have to watch this trick. And you're welcome. Oh, the only good thing about this episode, <laughs> no, the only thing I really thought was I liked about it was there was only four more of these episodes i got to watch for the whole year. And then it's over. Oh, only four more episodes to go. Thank God. Have yourself a great day. Bye.